Hello, I'm Captain Dan Kiggins. NASA recently completed a brief video on distraction for the airline I fly for. It's used in our human factors training to initiate a conversation in the classroom on the topic of distraction, which has seen an uptick during this pandemic period, as it has historically following any significant upheaval, such as September 11th, for instance. I can personally attest to the impact it's had on our flight, cabin, and ground crews. Imagine for a moment the challenges an airline faces when scheduling international flights amidst continuously changing COVID restrictions and the commensurate impact it has on our line crews. At NASA, we're extremely fortunate to have expertise in so many fields, especially human psychology. Dr. Steve Kasner from NASA Ames is one such expert, and he's with us today to shed some light on a few commonly held beliefs regarding distraction and the potential mitigation strategies we might consider as countermeasures. Prior to departure, our crews have multiple demands on their attention. Our flight crews might be checking waypoints for an oceanic crossing, while our flight attendants are likely involved with passenger boarding, and our ground crews are busy loading cargo. In all of these instances, they are frequently required to redirect their attention in response to a well-intentioned yet momentary interruption. The term multitasking is frequently mentioned in this context. And I'd like to ask if, in fact, we're capable of effectively multitasking, and if not, what are the potential shortfalls? Dr. Kasner, thank you for joining us once again. This is another one of those things for which we have a basic capability, but that we tend to overestimate. We're good at simultaneously doing no-brainer tasks, tasks that don't require explicit attention, like putting one foot in front of the other or chewing gum. We get into trouble when we imagine that other, more complex tasks fall into that same no-brainer category when they really don't. My favorite example is the task of looking out for changes or unusual things. It sounds like the easiest thing ever, but I can be doing one thing and anything that's out of the ordinary will just sort of announce itself. The problem is it really doesn't. Noticing changes or unusual things is really demanding. Pick up one of those spot the differences puzzles where they have two pictures side by side that are mostly identical except for a few details. Those things are hard. You can exhaust yourself searching for those things. You've seen the video of the people in the experiment who were bouncing a ball between them and half of them failed to notice a guy in a gorilla suit walk through. It's easy to assume that a task like this is a no-brainer, but in reality, it's pretty demanding. Dr. Kasner, travel has substantially rebounded domestically. The full flights and higher ops tempos during the recovery have made it challenging to provide our customers the on-time performance they expect and deserve. On occasion, a crew may arrive from a connecting flight later than planned and make an earnest effort to catch up through multitasking. Do we indeed save time doing this? We're not. In most cases, it's costing us time. Somebody did a study of multitasking in the workplace, people switching between phones, computers, conversations with coworkers and whatnot. They estimated that companies lose about $650 billion a year in productivity because of people trying to save time. That's quite a blind spot. Whenever we multitask, do any of us ever really try to measure our performance to really see if we're saving time or not? We tend to just assume that it's all going to plan. Steve, currently we divide the flight crew roles and responsibilities by pilot flying and pilot monitoring. As an industry, we're exploring what monitoring entails by phase of flight. Personally, it seems less fatiguing to be the pilot flying than monitoring, which seems counterintuitive. There's an old saying that goes, I love work. I could sit and watch it all day. It's pretty funny, but there's really no truth to it. The reality is, is that watching someone or something do work, especially work that we used to do, is not all that easy. It's what I like to call sitting and staring, and it really is more like work than it seems. You have to constantly be evaluating what's going on with the idea in the back of your mind that if anything goes wrong, it's going to be your fault. That can get exhausting pretty quickly. In one study, people reported being more tired after watching the work than did the people who were actually doing the work. And all the studies find the same thing. We're good for about the first 15 minutes or so, and then we start to decline and miss stuff. Distraction is clearly present in industries besides our own. It's in our drive to work, it's at work, and it's in our homes. Do you have a suggestion on how to counter daily distraction or perhaps increase our level of awareness of distraction? Yeah, it's tough news to hear. The first thing is to be aware of our own limitations, to stay humble. I like to work a little comedy into the routine. I used to fly with a guy and we used to take turns getting each other's name wrong, just to remind ourselves what lousy memories we have. It was fun stuff. I tell people to work new moves into their everyday routine. 
when someone tries to interrupt you, get in the habit of saying, give me a second. Remember that when people interrupt you, they're not trying to trip you up. They just don't get how bad interruptions can be. Say to them, look, pal, I got one prefrontal cortex and it's a little busy right now. Thank you for watching. We hope you find this the beginning of your own conversation. After all, awareness is the first step towards significant change.